Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing from my kitchen. Uh, I thought I'd better do something for the beach anglers amongst us all so you don't think I've forgotten you. And the subject today is reels for beginners. Now there's two choices, fixed ball or a multiplier. Which should you buy? As a complete beginner, I would say a fixed ball every time. Why? Well, it's quite simple really. Fixed ball will enable a complete beginner who hasn't got a very good casting style to get a bait into the water. And that is what matters, is having a bait in the water. They are simple to use. They're a bit, as you can see them side by side, they, 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 you know, a fixed ball is a bit bigger and clumsier than a multiplier. But for a beginner, getting a bait into the water without tangles should be your priority. Once you can do that and you have a halfway decent rod and a halfway decent reel, go and get some casting lessons. Now, price wise, uh, fixed balls start from about £15 upwards. Now, the real bottom end models I would avoid. If you just want to go sea fishing, occasionally they're all right but do not expect a 15 quid reel to last because they're built down to a price not up to a standard um, this particular model is pen affinity i've had it five years comes with two spools cast brilliantly and uh, very smooth never give me a problem um, two spools great advantage if you should get snagged and snapped off you can just swap spools over you can also cast much thinner lines like braid or nano line with them successfully or mono. The only stipulation about fixed balls is they do not like thick line. So anything over about 15 pounds and the performance starts dropping. Once you get to 20 pound, the performance is dropping off quite a lot. So stick to a good old standard 035, 15 pound mono if that's what you want or braid, or in my case, nano line. I don't use braid anymore, for hardly. Multipliers use braking systems, at least all the modern ones do. Either a centrifugal brake, which are pins on blocks that spin out and press against a drum and slows the spool from spinning, and or, as in this case, magnetic brakes. All designed to make your casting easier. Um, if you can cast a multiplier, they are very nice to use, but they, generally speaking, have a very slow retrieve. You have to spread the line across the spool with your thumb um, to get an even line laid. Do not do that. The next cast will result in an overrun. Um, you can't cast off the beach with a level wind when you're using a shock leader because it will just bang up and crack you off. Um, Fixed balls obviously have no problem on that. You can use heavier lines on the bigger multipliers without a great loss of performance. I still have a couple of bigger multipliers um, with much heavier lines on. I think one's got uh, 20 pound and the other's got 30 on it. But they are for short range fishing. Um, though one of them is still a casting multiplier and will hit 200 yards if you can do it. Um, but generally speaking, I reserve multipliers now for either um, short range things like conga fishing where I need real hauling power. But having said, if you need real hauling power, just buy a better quality fixed ball. I have a, a pen spin fisher, which is really, really tough and, uh, that'll haul big fish out of anywhere. So there you have it, you pay your money and takes your choice. Me personally, if someone asks me, I say, always a fixed ball. Push to recommend a model. There's a lot of good fixed balls. These pen affinities are as good as anything. Um, they'll cost very well. They'll, they're quite, you know, a pen affinity in the hands of a tournament caster using 15 pound mono will put a lead out 
250 yards or 250 meters without any great problems. So on the beach, that's all irrelevant. Um, I think the amount of anglers that could cast a baited rig 200 yards, there's probably not even 10 in this country that can do that. That's a bit different to a tournament where you're just casting a dead on one of our baited rigs. So distance is really not an issue. The fixed ball will be more than adequate. So the other piece of advice I would give is um, if you do want to buy a multiplier, make sure you choose a proper open cage CT with brakes and get some casting lessons because as sure as as sure as anything, sure as the sun rises, you will get birds and nests at some time or another. Now, for people who've seen me on the beach, you've only seen me use a fixed ball, but I will take out some multipliers when this lockdown's over. I'll take them onto the field and give them a good thrash just so the doubting Thomases know that I can actually use a multiplier. Um, and that's about it. So, for me, beginners, fixed balls. Once you can cast properly, you might want to change to a multiplier, but once you can cast properly, you don't need to change to a multiplier. So you might be quite happy sticking with a fixed ball. And more and more and more anglers are now choosing to do that. But again, as with all things fishing, tackle is a very personal choice and you use what you want. But for beginners, for me, fixed balls every time. Anyway. Hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, I will catch up with you soon. So until then, sight lines. Oh, and don't forget, if you like this video, thumbs up, please. Though I know there's going to be a lot of keyboard warriors writing comments like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I can assure you I do. So until next time, bye for now.